Hello YouTube. Okay, here we have the infamous Dell that was going to be the workstation, but is no longer serving that purpose. Let me uh, move the light over. My uh, ever so professional uh, desk lamp film lighting here. Here we have a uh, Dell Dimension 2350, which I got for free uh, from a neighbor of mine, and I really want to thank them for that. As you can see, it does not have the original DVD drive in it. I put a light-on DVD burner in it, which has light scribe, which is kind of overkill for this machine, but it works pretty well. This drive, however, is original to the machine. It is a, uh, a CD burner. And there's the DVD burner, which happens to have a CD, in it, actually. It needs to be taken out. There you go. It's got a floppy drive in it that does still work. However, I rarely use floppy drives anymore for other than things like flashing BIOSes because I don't have any classic PCs lying around to play with, really. As you can see, it has it's a Pentium 4 model rather than a Celeron, which is good. It's got two USB ports in the front and also a headphone jack right there for the integrated audio. But I don't use integrated audio in uh, too many systems. I don't like integrated audio. It doesn't sound very good. This case is... Uh, pretty beat up. It's got, I've had to tape it shut because so many clips have broken. So, well, I haven't had to tape it shut. I've just taped it together so that the power button actually meets the button in the computer. And, uh, yeah. Let me move all this crap out of the way. This thing happens to have a XP sticker on it for XP Home covering that up so you guys don't steal it because I actually do use Windows XP sometimes. Well let's have a look inside this thing. While it's turned while it's turned on. Yay. Okay. As you can see I have two hard drives in it. I put a second one in there. The uh, the one that was originally in this machine is no longer here anymore. It was a 60 gig Western Digital that went to Sean. Uh, right there is a 40 gigabyte Western Digital, a WD-400, which is quite a loud, which has quite a loud spindle, and uh, is a little bit old and slow, but it's good enough for things like Linux. And here is the drive that's currently running, which is a Western, it's 2007 Western Digital 250 gigabyte hard drive, which Windows is running on at the moment. It's got the original power supply, which still works. I even opened it up and took a look inside. The caps are good. It's built extremely well. Just like most old power supplies are. As you can see, it's got the typical fan and shroud cooling type thing. There's the fan right there spinning away. And there's the power supply fan there spinning away as well. As you can see, I don't have many uh, cards in this machine. I have a, I have a Sound Blaster Auto G2 in this machine at the minute for a sound card, which of course I have uh, things plugged into. It's got two IDE con it's got two IDE controllers, one one you can use for the DVD dr for uh, optical drives and the other you can use for hard drives. Listen to that hard drive. Listen to it part. <laughs> the capacitors seem to be pretty good. Seem to be very good in this machine. I don't see any bad ones anywhere. I mean, they look uh, good. They look real good. This machine is in immaculate condition for how old it is. It was bought new in 2003, and everything works perfectly. It has a Pentium 4. The, the, however, this machine is pretty crippled and old. It has a uh, Pentium 4 2.2 gigahertz. I believe it's 512K of cache. It might be 1 meg. I could be wrong. I'm not, really not sure. It might be 1 meg but somehow I doubt it. Uh, it has a 400 megahertz front, it has a 400 megahertz bus on it though, which means it's quite a slow processor. And that kind of limits what I can do as far as upgrading it to a hyper-threading one, because if I put an 800 megahertz bus socket 478 processor in here, it will run at half the speed that it's rated for, because of the bus. So I need a 400 megahertz bus processor, and those are a little expensive on eBay, as I've found out the hard way recently. So I've just decided to stick with this 2.2 gigahertz for now. I'll probably upgrade it to a 2.6, 
at some point. But it's got a couple PCI slots. Uh, no AGP, but it looks like there were provisions for one right there. Little solder pads and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it seems like it's not a low-end model because it's not a Celeron, but it's not a high-end model either, I don't think. There's the floppy drive right there. And, uh, yeah, that's the inside of this machine. It's not that exciting in there. It's just typical inside of a Dell. The case on this thing is really sturdy, apart from the front panel. The front panel sucks. Let's take a look at the back. Oh! <laughs> no. Okay, here we go. We have uh, PS2 ports, which are occupied by, you know, keyboard and mouse right there. We have serial port, parallel port for the printer, uh, onboard video, which is uh, which is Intel Extreme Graphics 2 or Intel 845, USB ports, one of which is occupied by a USB wireless G uh, dongle that tends to overheat a lot, so I'm going to remove that. This is a Netgear WPN-111. These things overheat like crazy and they suck. I even opened it up and drilled some holes in it to stop it from overheating and get some more ventilation in there, but that didn't help at all, so I might I don't know what I'm going to do about this overheating card. I might have to get some component cooler and spray it in there. Oh well. It's got onboard sound, which I don't use because onboard sound chips tend to sound like crap compared to cards. It's got four USB ports in the back, built-in uh, LAN, which is a Broadcom, which is Broadcom LAN, believe it or not. There's the uh, Auto G2 with its little FireWire port there, so I have FireWire on this system as a bonus. <laughs> as far as other cards go, uh, there might be an another one in this thing's future, such as a wireless PCI card and some other things, because this USB uh, one does not work very well at all. It overheats too fast. But something you might not expect. This machine came with Windows XP on it. I managed to shove Windows 7 into this thing. I love CRTs for that refresh rate thing. Uh, here I have the People PC keyboard hooked up to it along with the Dell mouse. It's a random Dell mouse and my patriotic mouse pad. Happy 4th of July. <laughs> yep, I managed to shove Windows 7 into this thing. And of course, we're looking at this on a ViewSonic E50, which uh, Nilbud gave to me. Thank you very much. This monitor's proven very useful for things like this. So let's uh, go to Properties and take a look at this. It's got Windows 7 Service Pack 1 on it. There's your Pentium 4, 2.2 gigahertz, 1 giga RAM, 32-bit operating system, obviously. It gives, it gives this system a 1.0. I bet the processor is what's doing that as well. Um, I haven't activated Windows yet on here. I should probably do that before long. Let's go to Device Manager and take a look at what's in this computer. I apologize for the refresh rate thing. That's kind of annoying. I don't know how to adjust it on this mini DV camera either, so. There you go. There's the uh, the hard drive that's in it. It's a, it's a WD2500JB. And th these drives are very, very good drives, as too, too. There's the uh, graphics card, which is an Intel 82845G slash GL slash GE slash PE slash GV. Long enough name. Jesus. Graphics controller. There you go. Keyboards, mice, monitor, network adapter. There's your Broadcom integrated controller there. I wonder if this actually has uh, more information in the thing. It probably does, but I don't feel like looking through it. There's the uh, creative. There's the Creative Sound Blaster LG2. Where are the chipsets? 
Apparently it doesn't show much about the chipsets, but having done LSPCI in Linux, uh, I can tell you that the chipsets in this are all ICH4 based. And they're Intel chipsets, there you go. And this thing can run stuff pretty well. For microphone and speakers, I have an Altec Lansing iPod dock hooked up to the auxiliary port in the back as speakers, just kind of ghetto setup, and I have the dinky Apple microphone from the early 90s as the microphone, which I just have sitting on top of the monitor there. But uh, this thing actually plays YouTube really well. I was watching uh, some UXW Bill earlier who had a, uh, a Dell similar to this, which actually kind of said, hey, I should make a video about mine. <laughs> it's very, very, very similar to mine. The 23, it's a 2300, mine's a 2350. Right there. But I'll show you, this thing actually plays full screen YouTube. Daytech fans that Dell used, but they seem to like to fail after a number of years, and I've tried re-oiling the bearings in them when they start getting noisy, and nothing, nothing seems to fix them. You can also see how I cleaned just about all the nasty funk out of the ports. There's still a little bit there. See, on mine, uh, the audio is actually like horizontal instead of vertical like that. So Dell did vary in their uh, Underneath boards the back VGA then. Underneath the port, but not enough to worry about. Clean that. And there you go. There's an Ethernet card down there. But yeah, it's quite similar to mine, and it actually plays that YouTube video extremely well. I'm very surprised, because in Linux, Flash ran really badly on this machine. Like, it was laggy as hell. I couldn't tell you why. But I just thought I'd show you Windows 7 running on a computer that otherwise is thought of to not run it very well. Or shouldn't be even be able to run it. What I had to do, the getting the video drivers was a bit of a challenge, though. I had to uh, download these drivers here for the Intel 845. And uh, what I had to do is I had to run the setup in compatibility mode for Windows XP, and it worked. Now I have uh, full control of the resolution of my monitor, as you'll see in a second. Screen resolution. There you go. I can actually put the tube at its limit, which is 1024 by 768 which is perfect for this little ViewSonic monitor. It's a 14-inch CRT from about 2006, so there you have it. I just thought I'd show off this little Dell, and look, it's actually just eating CPU sitting there. This thing has one gigabyte of RAM in it, too, and needs a little bit more than that, but it'll do for now. But I just thought I'd show a, uh, a Dell Dimension 2350 running Windows 7 because that's something I thought would not be very a very viable option for this computer, but turns out to be extremely viable. It runs very well for what it is. I mean, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it r runs pretty comparatively to XP on this machine. So, yeah, this machine will last a little bit longer than I thought. As a Windows machine, anyway. As a Linux machine, it could last a long, long, long time. But other than that, uh, that's it for this thing, so have a good one, everybody. Ciao.